All right, welcome to the Real Health webinar on your personal big why. Uh, this is Dr. Taylor Crick with the Real Health Resource, and this is the most important concept that we could ever teach any of our patients. Uh, and, and what we see, you know, we are a healthcare office. We help people who want to be healthier. And, and but what we see is we see some people that move in a healthier direction in our office, and we see some people that don't. And the number one thing that we found that makes the difference is not, you know, which diet book do we give them, which exercises do we give them. The number one thing that makes the difference is their mindset. And it starts with focusing on a big why. And picture this, you know, we get a lot of people that come into our office and they have X, Y, or Z health goal. And so I'll give you an example. Say somebody comes in and they tell me, I, I want to reverse diabetes. And I tell them, hey, it's possible. People have done it in the past. What we are going to do is we're going to show you a roadmap of exactly how to do it. But it's not our responsibility, right? It's their responsibility to change their food, to take certain actions. We're just going to help connect them to those actions. And so somebody will say, I want to reverse diabetes. And they'll come in, you know, a couple weeks later and we'll say, well, what'd you have for breakfast today? Let's say, oh, you know, I had a, a bagel. I had... Uh, orange juice, and I had some, you know, and, and uh, a banana. We say, well, that does not reverse diabetes. That your actions do not match up with your goals and with what you want. Okay, and we see that all the time, and you know, we all know this and have seen this you know, in our kids and different things. Well, I want to do this. Well, in order to do this, what you have to do is you have to take these certain action steps. I want to be. A professional basketball player well in order for that to happen son you need to practice you need to dribble you need to shoot I want to be a millionaire okay well in order to do that you have to save money you have to establish good habits but if the actions don't match up with the desires you're never gonna reach that end state and I think we all know which one speaks louder action or words your action speaks louder than your words and what we found to be the number one key motivator to make to help somebody make the right decisions to take the right actions is in fact their big why so your big why that's such an important concept is your big why why do you do different things why do you get up why do you go to work in the morning of course it's because you know you feel like you have to but really why what are you providing as far as an income? Who are you providing for? Why would you go to the gym in the morning? Why would you take certain actions? And we're going to go through, I'm going to teach you some of those questions that you can ask yourself. Because if you can uncover your big why and you can stay focused on it, when the why is big enough, the how is going to find a way. And I'd like to tell one story before we get into these questions. This is, you know, an old old story that you may have heard before about you know two people that are pretty well known as far as their their names and that's socrates and plato okay and so plato uh learned from socrates socrates was plato's mentor okay and so plato came to socrates and said you know socrates you're the wisest man in the land i want to learn your knowledge and your wisdom and there's a story about one day where Socrates took Plato down to the ocean, down to the sea, and he walked him out there, and long story short, he pushed him down under the water, and he held Plato's head down under the water, and he fought back, he fought back, but Socrates held him down, he was a strong guy, and eventually he blacked out. And then Socrates dragged him back up onto the beach, and resuscitated him, and Plato woke up and got really mad and said, hey, you tried to drown me. And Socrates said, no, if I wanted to drown you, if I wanted to kill you, I would have left you. And he said, well, what were you doing? And he said, when you want my knowledge as bad as you wanted air under the water, when you want my knowledge that bad, then come to me, then I know you're ready to learn. And that's very similar to your big why. When you want something bad enough, you're going to find a way. If you really, truly want to reverse diabetes, 
you're not going to drink your orange juice in the morning. You're going to continue reading articles. You're going to read books. You're going to continue learning. And, and you know, it's never a, a quick thing, but you're just going to continue learning and continue moving in a healthier direction. And when it comes to a fork in the road and you get to pick, do I choose this soda or do I choose this water? If you're focused on your big why, you're going to make the right decision because that's what you know that you want in your life when you're focused on your big why. So what are some, some questions that we can ask ourselves to kind of discover what is our big why? Well, how about this? Why, why do you want to live longer? You know, maybe, maybe you've never thought about this, but you know, if you want to you know, live longer, why? Ask yourself why. And that's the thing you're going to do is just continue to ask yourself these questions. What do you love doing that you want to be able to continue doing? Why would you choose you know, a salad over a, a cheeseburger? Why would you go to the gym? Why would you avoid a sugary food? Why would you read a book that's going to maybe you know, help you learn a, a new skill that you didn't have before? And so that's what it starts with is asking yourself why. You know, why, uh, you know, do you want to, to be healthy? You know, a lot of people come in here and, and maybe they have a pain. They have a pain that they want to get rid of or they have a medication that they want to get off of. Well, the question is why? Uh, if you're on medication and you want to get off of it, that's my first question. Why do you want to get off of it? Well, I just don't think that it's doing any good. Okay, why? Well, because I've read about the side effects and I just know that this and that and yada, yada, yada. Okay, well, why? Well, I think that it's, it's shortening my lifespan. Okay, well, why is that important to you? Well, I have a wife. I have kids. I have you know, a mission and a purpose. I own a business. I, I'm a great employee. I do this or that. I volunteer at my church. I do this or that. And you keep asking that question, why? And you get down to what is your big why. Another one is like uh, losing weight. Well, what is, what is your why? Because if I find out that, well, your why is, well, I'm going on a vacation in two months, I want to lose 10 pounds so I can look good in my bathing suit. It, you know, not a bad reason, definitely a, 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 a worthy reason and something that we can help with. But what I would much rather you focus on is what is your big why? What is that weight doing? What is going to happen, you know, in your life five, 10, 20 years down the road? If these things continue, if you've been putting on, you know, three pounds a year for the last five years, you're 15 pounds heavier. Well, what does that look like 10 years from now? You're another 30 pounds heavier. That leads to an increased risk of heart attack, increased risk of diabetes. Literally, you know, can shorten your life when you start to look at the health statistics. Whereas on the other hand, if somebody comes in and they say, well, I want to lose 10 pounds. I say, well, why? They say, well, I can't play with my kids anymore. I, you know, I wrestle with my kids and I just get so out of breath. We go on hikes up in the mountains and I just can't do it. And, and I want to get back to that. I, I want to be able to play with my wife, with my kids, go out and have fun like I used to. Plus, I want to live a long time. I know that this added weight is going to increase my risk of heart disease, increase my risk of diabetes. Well, that's a person that right away, right in the beginning, I think, wow, this is somebody that's going to get well because they have a bigger why. And nobody's why is bigger than anybody else's. They're just more focused on it. They're just more centered and attached to that why. So what you need to do is you need to discover what is your why. Think about what do you want in life? Where do you want to be? Depending on how old you are, where do you want to be in 5, 10, 15, 20 years, 30 years? I'm going to share with you in a second a couple of my big whys and why I do the things that I do, why I enjoy them, and, and why, you know, it's not a chore to me to have to eat healthy. You know, so many people, they'll say, oh, I gotta eat these salads, uh, and complain about their healthy eating when they have a huge why. So it shouldn't be a complaint. It's a blessing to know these things and to have the knowledge to be where you wanna be down the road further. So let's talk about, you know, my, my big why. I'm pulling my slides here. So why? Well, there's my, my big why right there. Okay, those are my two little girls. So when I think about, you know, being healthy, you know, why do I want to be healthy? That's the reason why. You know, because right now, 
I'm relatively young. They're very young. But my big why is that I want to be around for them when they're you know older. You know, when they're 18, I, I want to see them off to college. When they're hopefully pretty old, I want to I want to walk them down the aisle at their weddings. I want to kiss my grandkids. I want to kiss my great grandkids. I want to walk my grandkids down the aisle at their wedding. And not only do I want to be around for my kids, I don't want to just be alive. So many people in our office, their big why might be, well, I watched what happened to my parents. I watched them go downhill and downhill and downhill so quickly, and I watched them walk around with a bag full of medications, and I wound up caring for my parents the last few years, and I saw the burden that that took on myself, on my sisters, on my brothers, and I don't want to wind up in that situation. You know, we always have two you know, motivations, either avoiding pain or moving towards pleasure and both of those should be a part of your big why where do you want to be and why so for my kids like i said that is a something that's you know really far down the road but i i know that i want to be around for them i want to be a good dad and not just be around just be alive but be able to parent uh as long as i can with as much energy and love and vitality as I can, uh, so that we can create memories, so that we can create relationships, and, and that's just what I want in my life. The other thing that I'll mention about my big why, because that's a huge part, is you know my girls. But the reason that that I'm able to think like this, uh, I think that the biggest reason why you know why I have this mindset is this right here. Let me pull this back up. This right here. So this is my parents in the middle and my grandparents on either side okay and so i don't i don't know all their ages exactly uh but the oldest is 89 they're all in their 80s and my parents you know talk about how rare it is for anybody else of their friends uh, of their you know peers to have all four of their parents still alive it's just so rare that most people just don't don't have that and, 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 you know, they've set just an amazing example for us. Um, and, and, you know, I grew up taking this for granted. I grew up with all my grandparents. I grew up having fun with them. I grew up, you know, shooting BB guns with one grandpa and, and building, you know, things with my other grandpa and riding bikes and going to Cubs games and all, all this fun stuff. But then, you know, I look to my wife's side of the family and, and my girls, my, my two and a half year old twins that I just showed you, they only know one of their grandparents on my wife's side of the family. And that's not a judgment or a comparison by, by any means. My wife's family is amazing. My wife's parents set such a great example. There's no divorce anywhere on my side or my wife's side of her family. But I really just, I, I wish, you know, for myself, but also for my kids, I wish that their great grandparents were around. Uh, because I get to see on my side of the family, you know, making great memories and seeing, taking pictures and knowing their great grandparents is such an amazing blessing. Whereas on the other side, they only get to know one. And, and I only got to know two of my wife's grandparents. And now only one is, you know, still with us, unfortunately. So I get to see the future. I get to see where that leads. You know, one of my, my grandfathers there is 89 still plays tennis, still plays golf, is still really active, still comes over to, to my parents' house and fixes things for them. And, and, and all four of my grandparents still have energy, still have life, still have vitality, and that's exactly where I want to be. So I'm doing it for my girls, but I also have the picture painted for me by my parents and my grandparents of what that could look like if I continue to make these choices. So to me, you know, choosing a healthy food is not a chore by any means because I know that when I choose the poor food, the, the sugary food, the, you know, just the crappy, bad fat processed food, I know where that leads. And, and that doesn't mean that I live my life perfectly. By, by, by all means, it's, it's quite, you know, it, it, that's not true. Uh, but the majority of the time, I make great decisions because I'm future paced and I know where that's going to lead. I know that the decisions that I make now in my 30s are going to affect me 
into my 60s, 70s, and 80s because that's how disease works. So if you're 60, 60 years old and you're just now deciding to make these decisions, it's never too late. I have an incredible amount of faith in the body's ability to heal. But once again, you have to focus on your big why so that your actions are consistent with your goals and with what you want. The last thing that I will mention is we have you know, a lot of testimonials um, of our patients. And one of my favorite testimonials is a patient named Wade. Okay, and you can go on and check these out on YouTube if you want to see it. But Wade, at the time we shot his testimonial, he had lost 115 pounds in six months. So really, really huge weight loss, really, really big change. But I asked Wade because Wade has been a patient of ours for a long time. And, and two years before we shot this video, we had done a weight loss challenge, and Wade was the winner. Um, and, and he lost you know, maybe 25 or 30 pounds in 28 days, big change, awesome start, but he gained it all back, okay? And so his why was, I wanna win this weight loss challenge, but his why wasn't big enough. He gained it all back. And so I asked him in the video, I said, Wade, what changed this time? Because you've lost weight before, and you haven't cut off what was different this time. And I love his answer more than anything. He said, I had the big why. When your why is big enough, the how will find a way. So think about what are you living for? Where do you want to be in the future? What do you want to still be able to do? Where do you want you know, your finances to be, your energy to be, your life to be, your relationships to be, your family to be? You know, set some goals like that, future pace yourself. Then when your why is big enough, the how will find a way. You're gonna find action steps that are gonna lead you towards that bigger goal. You're gonna continue to take those steps and move in the right direction. And what you're gonna find out is that when you reach those landmarks five years, 10 years, 20 years down the road, you're headed in the direction that you want it to be because your why was big enough. So a couple things that you can do, you know, I've gotten to the point now where I, I, I'm focused enough on my big why that, that it, it really navigates and, and is the compass for every decision that I make in my life. Where do I want to be and is this decision moving me towards that? But it didn't start off that way. So what you can do, focus on your big why. If it's your kids or your family, take a picture and put it up on your, you know, your, your uh, speedometer, your dashboard of your car, so that you're always seeing it. Put it as the background of your phone. When you wake up in the morning, first thing in the morning, spend five minutes talking about or thinking about or meditating on or praying for, for your big why, so that you continue to, continue to reinforce those pathways so that that big why becomes such a part of you that you don't have to think about it consciously, like which of these foods is gonna be better for me as a parent, for me as a, a leader, for me as an employee, for me as a husband, uh, et cetera. It just becomes automatic and you start making better choices. But I promise you, if you have a health goal, if you have a goal, if you have somewhere that you want to be down the road, you're not going to get there unless you're focused on your big why. The why is the most important thing because when the why is big enough, the how will find a way. So stay tuned as we continue to give you information on how to achieve real health, but really there is nothing more important than focusing on your big why. So this is the most important video that we will ever shoot. I'm glad that you stay tuned and watched it. Uh, and look at the Real Health Resource for more videos and more things that you can do as far as the how when your why has become big enough.